my next guest is the assistant ticket sales manager at the Buffalo Bills. Please welcome Sarah Beth Fisher. Hey, sir. Hi. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Um, Sarah, so how would you describe your path uh, into the sport industry? Yeah, so I actually, um, we can literally use the phrase, phrase started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Um, so I started with the Bills about 16 years ago. Um, this upcoming season will be my 17th season. And I started um, at training camp while I was in college at St. John Fisher. And I was literally cleaning the players' bedrooms. So that's kind of how I got my start. Um, you know, I was cleaning their bedrooms, doing security at the gates, letting people into training camp, stuff like that. So I've kind of seen it all. Um, and then after that, I became an intern in our business development department. So I was doing um, credit card sales, like at different events throughout Buffalo, stuff like that. Um, I was an intern for them on game days while I was in college. And I was doing like sponsorship activation in the stands. So the games that you see people playing, um, like for Subway or McDonald's, things like that. I was helping out with that. And then when I was graduating uh, my senior year of college, there was a job open in our ticket office doing ticket sales. And, you know, I needed a job. I was graduating in a couple of months. I had only really done the credit card sales um, through our business development department. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll try this. So I interviewed um, and then basically started doing ticket sales um, the day after I graduated. So I've been in the ticket office um, since then. And my job has kind of evolved a little bit. So I started just as a ticket sales account executive um, doing group sales, season ticket sales, club seat sales. And then I kind of, you know, made it into what it is today. Um, I really wanted to work with the community a little bit more. So I kind of developed a lot of like community programs um, with our ticketing ticketing department, um, like a youth football program, a United Way program. Um, I also helped evolve our player season ticket program, which is where and donate them back to the community. So kind of, you know, evolved into that. Um, and then eventually we created an inside sales team uh, about two years ago. So now I oversee our inside sales team um, for full-time account executives and then I'm also still helping um, with a lot of the initiative, the group ticket initiatives that I mentioned before. Sarah, I find it so fascinating how you've been with the Buffalo Bills for so long. So have you seen <laughs> the organization evolve or change over time since uh, you've been with the, orga the organization? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's changed a lot. So we have about 30 full-time employees um, in the ticket office now. And when I started, I would say we maybe had about half of that, um, but it's changed so much since then just because of technology, you know, learning from other teams. But like I said, especially technology. I mean, when we started, you didn't have um, like statistics that you could use to kind of gauge season ticket holders interest. Um, you know, you can use those for marketing purposes. Social media really wasn't used at all when I started. And now it's huge. I mean, we're putting ads on Facebook. We're putting ads on LinkedIn. Um, Instagram, Twitter. So all of that is used and it wasn't used when I, when I started, um, when I started, we were using paper tickets only now pretty much everything is mobile, um, which, you know, makes it a lot easier for us because you're not doing, you're not spending as much in mailing. Um, you're not spending the resources and the time to mail all the tickets out um, using the mobile ticketing and mobile ticketing also allows us to kind of track um, people that are people's buying behaviors. So we're able to share data with some secondary markets um, where they can, you know, kind of tell us like who's buying and what category do they fall in um, and things like that. So then we can, you know, use that data to then present to those customers and try to get them to buy um, like season tickets. If they only bought an individual game, we can track all the games that they came to um, ask them about those experiences and things like that. So, yeah, I would say technology has definitely helped us evolve, um, you know, the social media aspect as well as just the ticketing, like the pr presentation of the tickets themselves. Sarah, what's your day-to-day -day responsibilities or some tasks that you do in your role? Yeah. So, I mean, most sales reps, when they start, um, are responsible for a certain amount of calls each day. Um, our sales reps are responsible for 60 touch points. So it's usually about 40 calls and 20 emails. Um, most, 
most account executives do go above and beyond that. Um, and each team is different. So it kind of just depends on what team you're with, um, you know, depending on how many calls you have to make a day. So I'm still responsible for making calls, setting meetings. Um, the meetings usually are with like local business people trying to get them into our club seats or our suites. And then, as I mentioned before, I'm also kind of in charge um, of helping manage some of our inside sales team, as well as some of our full-time sales team. And then just assisting them with any like promotions that they have regarding tickets. And then also kind of executing some of my own promotions. So last year, or sorry, two years ago, um, we started a promotion at the stadium. It's called Nama Stadium. So basically people would get um, a yoga class on the field with local um, yoga teachers. And then they would also get a ticket to a Bills game. So um, it was a promotion that I came up with some with some of my like local yogi friends. Um, we put this together and it was really successful. So we sold about 500 tickets last year through that promotion. Um, so I have some different like I said, different ticketing promotions that I kind of came up with um, that I'm still responsible for executing as, as well as, you know, overseeing our staff and making some calls each day and meetings. Sarah, what kind of training do you think is essential to developing sales employees within the sport industry? So it's so funny because every time I go to like a school or, you know, a, a meeting with students or something like that, nobody, nobody wants to go into sales. Like everyone's like, I don't want to do sales. Like, I don't want to like call people all day and all this stuff. But honestly, like, I think it's, I mean, I didn't know if I wanted to do it when I started and I, I love it. So I think that a lot of people, you have to start in sales. A lot of the people in our organization started in the sales department and then they moved on to community relations. They moved on to the marketing department. Um, they moved on to business development, things like that. So if you're out there saying you don't want to do sales, um, I highly recommend trying it. It's not for everybody, but I think you just have to have a good personality, but that's any job. So sales is kind of the foundation for a lot of the other jobs in our organization. I mean, you have to be friendly. You have to be good with people. You have to have good organizational skills. Um, so all of those things kind of fall in line with a lot of the other things that you might want to do in sports. And once you kind of have an in doing sales with an organization, then, you know, you might have the opportunity to apply for a different job in a different department. So I'm really, you know, pushing sales. Um, but I think the other like good part about being in sales is that you can track your progress, which I didn't really think about when I started it, but it's really nice to be able to come in every day and just challenge yourself. So you're not, you know, you're not always going against someone else necessarily. Like you should all be working together as a department to sell out the games. Um, but you know, you can go in every day and say, okay, I made 60 calls yesterday. I'm going to make 80 calls today. And you can see those calls add up when you make a sale. And that's such a good feeling. And then on game day, when you see a sold out stadium, you can say like, I did this, like I contributed to this. So like I said, if you're, if you're really fighting it, um, I'm really recommending that you try it. Um, just see if you like it. Cause a lot of people I think go into it and they're like, I don't want to do this. I'm going to hate it. And then they end up loving it. So being, being organized, being personable, um, you know, building those skills, trying to network with as many people as you can all helps with sales. Um, I grew up in the Buffalo area, so, you know, I've still, am you know, meeting with people who maybe like I grew up with somebody and now their parents own a business or they own a business. And now I'm, you know, setting up meetings with them to try to get them into a suite for a game or try to get them club seats for a game. So it's just always about networking. It's about meeting as many people as you can, um, getting out in the community and yeah, I mean, just being, just being personable. Mm -hmm. Sarah, don't you think that uh, sales kind of goes into everything else in an organization and saying that, how do you think that um, employees and sales can be successful? Yeah, so it definitely, so we actually have like a chart at all of our desks, like all the sales reps, we all have a chart um, just kind of showing how like a sold out stadium basically drives everything else. So a sold out stadium, um, you know, will help your business development department sell a sponsorship because a sponsor is going to want as many people seeing their advertising as possible. Um, it's going to help your community relations department because they'll be able to, you know, get groups into the game um, 
and meet the players if the players are in a good mood because the fans are in a good mood and they're winning games and things like that. So it all kind of, you know, ties together. Yeah. So, I mean, I think just um, being able to understand like how it all ties together, um, you know, will definitely, definitely help you. Um, And just realizing that. And like I said, just being able to go to a sold out stadium and, you know, seeing, seeing the fans in the stands and just saying to yourself, like I, like I did this. Uh, Sarah. So as, as you know, many people want to go into the sport industry, especially in sport management programs or business programs. Uh, What advice would you give individuals trying to have a career in the sport industry? So my best advice is to start as early as possible in your college career. Um, So like I said, I started with the Bills after my freshman year, um, you know, working at training camp in the summers, just meeting as many people as I could. Um, But during my time at college, I was also doing some other internships. So even though I've only worked for the Bills, like during my professional career, um, I also worked at... Um, an athletic club while I was in college. So I kind of helped with their like finance and marketing department a little bit. So I learned that side um, just from like a different angle, like a totally different angle. Um, It was like a nationwide um, health club. So, you know, I kind of learned, you know, some of their marketing tactics, um, some of their finance and things like that. But I was also just volunteering like is it at as many other events during school that I could because you never, like, I had no idea what was going to happen when I graduated. Um, you know, I honestly, it was just right place, right time. Like someone was leaving the ticket office. I was graduating a couple months later. So I was able to kind of just, you know, work into that role. It all, you know, it all worked out. Um, but that isn't always the case. So you have to make as many connections as you can. You have to do it early. Like a lot of people I see are waiting until their senior year and then they're contacting me and they're like, Oh, I need an internship to graduate. And I'm like, I mean, we don't have anything and like you should have done this three years ago. <laughs> like, As soon as you um, decide that this is like what you want to do, then you really have to dive in because it's, it's a very competitive field. Um, you have to be willing to move. I was very, very lucky to be able to stay in my hometown. Um, but before I was graduating, I knew that it was very possible I'd have to move. Most of my successful colleagues from college have had to move. I mean, they've moved to Florida, Arizona, California, um, just to do internships sometimes. And sometimes you're flying places just to meet with somebody, just to interview them. And I mean, when I was graduating college, like Zoom didn't exist. Like this wasn't possible. Like you couldn't meet someone virtually. You had to go meet them in person. So sometimes you're driving six hours just to meet somebody and get some advice from them. Um, so I just say, start early, do as much as you can, um, dive in, you know, full force. Otherwise it's just, it's just not going to work. I mean, there's so much competition, like we're interviewing people, you know, for inside sales positions and they're, they're leaving sometimes full-time jobs to do a part-time job because they didn't start early when they were in college. So they're, you know, maybe working, um, full-time and something they don't want to do, but then they're leaving that job to do a part-time job for us because they're trying to change career paths or trying to, you know, get on the right path. So yeah, just start early and, and dive right in. Sarah, one of the most, uh, fascinating aspects of the show idea is that I could meet so many people like yourself virtually and interview them and gain insight about the industry. So, um, but on a, the end on a really light note, um, what is your most memorable experience so far in your sport career? Yeah, so I probably have two. Um, the first one was just, you know, we were we were just incredibly lucky. Um, but when the Pagulas bought the team about five years ago now, um, we were playing in London. And they took the entire organization to London to see the, the Bills play there. And it was, I mean, it was amazing. It was it was one of the best experiences I haven't, I hadn't been overseas, um, in my life. So going to London was amazing. Um, seeing the culture there, the people being able to go to the game there was, was awesome. So, you know, I was really, really lucky and we were all really, really lucky that they, they allowed us to do that. Um, and then my, probably my favorite like bills moment, I would say, um, is when they went to the playoffs or when they made the playoffs, um, on new year's Eve, Let's see what, while it was going into 
like 2018, I guess you would say like it was New Year's Eve, like 2017, like the clock was striking midnight um, to 2018. But it was just amazing because I'm sure most Bills fans remember it, obviously, but um, we were waiting on the Cincinnati Bengals um, to win the game. And Andy Dalton threw like this, you know, whatever 30 yard pass. I don't even know what it was um, to win the game. So then that meant that we were going to the playoffs in Jacksonville. Um, you know, we didn't end up winning in Jacksonville. I did go down there for the game, but it was the first time we've been to the playoffs in 17 years. Um, so it was, it was awesome. It was just such an amazing experience. And the fact that it happened on New Year's Eve, like the city of Buffalo was just electric. It was, it was amazing. You know, the footage from the locker room, um, Kyle Williams with his kids was just awesome. So, you know, luckily we did make the playoffs this past season. So now, you know, we have a, a couple of those underneath our belts. Um, and I think, you know, this year is looking really promising for us. So we're all really, really excited and can't wait to see what the future brings. There, thank you for doing this once again. Um, means, yeah, no the problem. World, means the world to me. Um, and it's been such a great conversation learning about the Bills. So thank you so much and all the best to you and your family moving forward. You too, Vince. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Sarah Beth Fisher.